Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Paver and we're going out live on YouTube and Twitch TV and on Facebook. First time in a while that we've done that. Um, links on my website, michellepaver.com slash chat. Oh, and if you want to be part of live chat uh, while I'm talking, uh, you can do so. You can uh, go to the live chat area on YouTube, start typing and we'll pick it up somehow. Um, or you can go on Twitter, hashtag Torak, or leave a comment on Facebook. And towards the end of the program, I will pick up as much as I can of your live chat. I'm not very good at sort of following it as we as we speak or as I speak. Um, so anyway, I hope you're all reasonably well, wherever you are, and managing OK, despite this wretched pandemic. Um, since I last did one of these back in January, uh, I've been really busy, uh, hard at work on Wolf Bane the third part of the sort of trilogy and the ninth part of the of the Wolf Brother books. Um, I've also, some good news, I've also had my first COVID jab uh, vaccine recently. Um, and uh, piece of cake, uh, whatever your age, I do urge you to take up the offer as and when you get it. It's really important that we all get the jab. Um, and it's really safe and incredibly effective. Um, so there we are, do get the jab. Um, I've also, what else have I been doing? I've also been getting ready, of course, for the publication of Skin Taker. Um, that's involved sort of doing a bit of PR and uh, virtually and signing um, book plates. I signed 200 at lunchtime today, actually. Um, and uh, I also got my first what, few copies of Skin Taker, the finished copy. Um, the colour doesn't come out quite as well, but it's absolutely stunning. It's one of I think one of the best um, of my books is just an, a gorgeous object. I was sort of pawing it um, when I got it. It's absolutely beautiful. But the highlight um, of my last couple of months was back in February when Ian McKellen recorded the audiobook of Skin Taker. And um, this was a little different this year because always in the past, for every single other book, I've been in the recording studio with him. Uh, but this time, because of COVID, he was in the studio, as you can see, um, but I wasn't. Um, it was just him in the studio, along with our wonderful producer, a young man called uh, Dylan. Um, and I was following on where I am now in my spare room, but I was on Skype. So if you can imagine, it took three days, uh, eight hour Skype calls. <laughs> um, and I was present virtually um, by means of just a, a laptop sitting behind Dylan, so they could see me and everything. Um, and it was an incredibly intense but very fun uh, three days. And just just to explain, you can see what you know. He's he's reading. Uh, Ian's reading into all on his own in this sort of soundproofed studio. And then Dylan is in another part of the studio. There's a huge big glass window in between, so they can see each other. And I sitting in the laptop like the brain of Morbius, if you're a Doctor Who fan, um, and sitting the laptop is behind Dylan. And um, Occasionally, what do I, we're all following along on the script. Why, why do they need me? Well, they don't really need me, but it, I, I did actually have to work quite hard because occasionally, quite often, Ian would ask for a quick pricey of each chapter just to remind him of where the mood was and what was happening. And I had to prepare those in advance because, you know, you can't always remember, even if I wrote the book, what, happened, what went on in which bit. Um, and then he might ask suddenly, you know, a little bit of explanation or pronunciation, and, you know, a bit of wolf behaviour. Uh, but it was the most amazing experience. It, I think he gave one of his best performances ever. The climax is incredible. At one point, Dylan was sort of sitting there. I could see he was making claw marks because it was so intense, and so was I. Uh, and and it added to the gaiety of nations that Dylan, the producer, um, has been a lifelong Wolf Brother fan, so he came in with a different Wolf T-shirt every day. So we all had quite a lot of fun, uh, and... Uh, Ian, as I said, gave a magnificent reading. He said he'd had fun, so let's hope we can persuade him back for Wolfbane, the last, the ninth in the series. Um, so there we are. The, the audiobook comes out at the same time as Skin Taker, which is the 1st of April, and uh, it's, it's a corker. Now we have time for your questions and comments. We've had some fantastic ones, and thank you to everybody who's, who's sent them in. Um, and although we can't show every single one, this is just a selection, uh, be assured that I do read 
every word of every one. Um, in fact, we're doing things a little differently this time. Um, we're splitting them into two groups, um, just because there are quite a lot of questions and comments. And in the middle, we'll be talking about, in between the two groups, we're talking about the giveaway, um, which uh, no surprises, it's going to be copies of Skin Taker. But without further ado, let's, let's get into the first part of the questions, if I can get this right. Here we are, ask Michelle anything, yay. Um, now, first of all, we've got a lovely comment actually from Sonia. Um, yes, uh, she's a, a final year student at university doing a degree in computer arts, big fan of Wakenhurst and final year project, building a Wake's End library. This is the library in, in the house, Wake's End, in 3D space. I only have a small idea of what that means. Through a small video of changing light and atmosphere, she's planning on telling the story of Maud's father's descent into madness. Um, and you very politely asking whether you could include the name Wake's End. Yes, of course you can, but by all means do. Um, and how nice of you to ask and good luck with the project. It sounds great. Um, a lovely comment from, I hope I pronounce your name right, Genevieve. Or, um, this is an amazing comment. I can't read everything now, but she grew up, she grew up reading the books. Uh, my childhood was turbulent and your books were always a constant in my life. I always felt that Torak, Ren and Wolf were really with me. Um, your writing has got me through some of the worst days in my life, giving me courage and hope. And she now has a four-year-old daughter called Winter. I love that name. Um, and uh, and she's also writing because my childhood cat was named Meow. Very good at names. Um, and she, she used to read them together. And uh, I always thought she was my wolf. And I was devastated when I lost her seven years old, seven years ago to old age. But this morning I opened your new book for the first time, and my cat Sage jumped up to sit with me. It hit me that she is my new wolf, just like me I was. That's absolutely wonderful. That's such an amazing comment. Thank you so much um, for, for bringing that in, sending that in. We've now got one from Callum. Um, uh, it was who enjoyed listening to Ian McKellen record Viper's Daughter audiobook. It was a great four weeks listening to it. I'm so glad you enjoyed that, Callum. Um, and it was, we, we have, I think we have Elf to thank for, for that idea of putting that on, on um, wherever it was. And he's just said, thank you. Now we have one from Miss Cameron. This is amazing. Miss um, Cameron Wilkins. Wilkins. Uh, my name is Cameron or Cammy. I am in paver class at my school. I have to say I was puzzled by what this meant, but it read on. I love reading Wolf Brother. I'm going to read Spirit Walker. I'm dyslexic and I find reading quite hard. Well, absolutely, you would. Uh, but I have finished Wolf Brother. I did my quiz on it and I got 100%. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Well done, Cammy. Um, I wondered if you'd be able to say hello to Paver class at King's North Primary School, as we're all very proud to have our class named after you. Of course I can. I'm sorry this is a bit late. Um, there are, tends to be a delay when I reply to these things, but hello to everybody in Paver class at King's North Primary School. Um, I have to say that's the first time I've heard of a class being named after me. My head is going to be enormous after this. So I'm so glad you're enjoying the, st the stories. And may I say, I think you must have a wonderful teacher who must be very good at reading stories. So thank you for getting in touch. Um, now we have one from Spain in, may I say, beautiful English from Maria. Um, uh, it was thanks to Chronicles of Ancient Darkness that I truly fell in love with literature. That is what I like to hear. I felt transported to another time and place. It was so exciting and fascinating. Um, and she goes on and um, it's really ex wonderful to hear this. When I have the chance, I will reread them and buy Viper's Daughter. I think it hasn't been translated into Spanish yet. I, I think you may be right, but it will be soon, I think. But maybe I will buy the English version. Well, it sounds like you'd be able to manage it, Maria. Um, so well done. Thank you so much for getting in touch. And now we've got um, one from Ali. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your um, surname. You've been a huge fan of the Wolf Brothers series since I was 11, now 24, and I still reread them about once a year. That's brilliant. Um, Finn Kedin has always been a huge comfort character for me as I've read them. And I don't, have, we, have we shown um, that the interpretation, Ali's interpretation of that, the picture, uh, we're just going to um, 
we're going to try to because it's a really really good one yeah it's it's excellent um so thank you for that and uh suggestion if you feel like it put it in the museum on wolfbrother.com um because i'm sure other fans would like to have a have a look at it so well done now um melissa who lives in wimbledon <laughs> and her nine-year-old daughter phoebe that wimbledon is where i live nine-year-old daughter phoebe goes to putney high is doing a project about me um, i fear this will come too late for that this reply but you wondered whether i could send a message to all to, to four class 4k at putney high a wave and a hello and a message well done and thank you for reading the wolf brother books again you must have a teacher with imagination and flair um so thank you for choosing my book um i hope you enjoy it um the question from melissa is would she be able to send me some written questions to answer or interview me online i'm afraid i get too many questions you know requests for that sort of thing i would never get any writing done if i if i had to if i said yes to you i'd have to say yes to quite a lot of people um so i'm afraid i can't do you know individual help with homework or projects and things but good luck with it and you'll find quite a lot on my website i think which might help um you know michellepaver.com or wolfbrother.com um here's one from bethany um I was just wondering if Viper's, this is an interesting one, if Viper's daughter is going to get the cover with the real animals on it, like the other ones in the series. And she gives two examples. I happen to have them here. There's the Soul Eater um, with the bear. I love that one. I think it's a lovely one. And then there's Ghost Hunter with the Eagle Owl. I don't know if you can see that, but the Eagle Owl and then Torak. Um, well, you know, will Viper's daughter be getting that and, and or Skin Taker? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, there, had, there was some talk a little while ago of um, doing some different covers later on for, for Skin Take, Viper's Daughter and Skin Taker. Um, I don't know. I, I, I doubt very much that they would look exactly in the same sort of format because the first six, brother, six Wolf Brother books are published by a different publisher from these three, Viper's Daughter and Skin Taker. So and getting them to actually coordinate would be more than my life's worth I think so don't know about that but Bethany goes on to say I'm a big fan of your books and looking forward to Skin Taker pre-ordered it already fantastic um, now I think we call you Timote in Slovakia so again impressed with your your English um, and you're 12 years old so I'm really impressed uh, and you really like my books you're asking, yes, where would I buy the, the book Viper's Daughter in Slovak or Czech? I don't think it's been translated yet. I think the thing to do, Timotej, is um, try to contact the your, your Slovak or Czech publisher of the Wolf Brother books, the previous Wolf Brother books, and you can get all the contact details for each publisher. This is quite interesting. I didn't know this, actually. They're given on the Ask page of my website. So if you go to michellepaver.com slash ask, um, you should be able to find the details of the, um, the publisher of the Wolf Brother books in your country. So that's quite useful. And thank you very much for that, Elf. That was a useful thing. And good luck, Timothy. I hope you managed had success. Here's one from Willen, uh, Willen Hartley. Um, whose mother got him Wolf Brother, and he loved it. So that's fantastic. You're reading Spirit Walker at the moment. You've probably finished it by now because you wrote this message in January. Um, ah, yes, after COVID, are you speaking anywhere? That's the first question. Well, I've got no plans until after COVID because even though I had the first jab, I haven't had the second, and you know, goodness knows what's happening with variants and things. So. No plans at the moment to be speaking anywhere live, although I will be doing virtual events. What is Viper's daughter like? You're going to have to wait and see, but there's a little bit of a blurb, um, I think, on Amazon. Um, is the reason there's, oh, this is an interesting one, is there a reason there are seven books because there are seven soul eaters? No, um, because there, are, there won't be seven books. There'll be eight books when Skin Taker comes out and there'll be nine when Wolfbane comes out. And that will be the final number of books. Oh, I just like the sound of nine. It's got a sort of magical number to it. Now, here's one from Isabella, um, and who is very pleased that I mentioned some of her questions before. And this question is, might 
um, I said there would be a series coming out eventually, where would we be able to watch it? Uh, would it be like Netflix or any other platform? Well, um, it'll be on a platform if it happens, and we're hoping it'll happen. I can't say at the moment which platform it will be on. Um, that's being decided at the moment <laughs> as we speak, so fingers crossed. Um, all I can say is that as and when we know anything definite, I will make an announcement, so you'll be the first to hear. Um, so fingers crossed. Uh, Marcello, um, what are some facts about your researching of Wolf Brother? Well, uh, I don't think I've got time to describe how I was inspired by meeting a real bear, but you can find that on wolfbrother.com. So that I think I, I give quite a long description of how I, I found the bear. Um, and uh, I think that's also, if you look in the back of the, the author's notes at the back of each book, that I give quite long descriptions of how I did the research for each, each book. So those will probably help a little bit. Um, a, a small trivial fact that I can tell you is the first trip I took to um, to research Wolf Brother was was uh, in Finland. Oh, I think it was two thousand and three or two thousand and four, um, and there I discovered I tasted lingonberries for the first time by just scooping some up from the forest floor, and uh, I just adored them, and that's why they are Wolf's favourite berry. So that's a little trivial fact there. Um, and Willen uh, has one uh, again. Uh, please, could you tell me if you're planning to speak in public this year? Again, I've said, you know, no, probably not, uh, not live, but I mean, we'll see later on in the year. Uh, can you give me any advice about writing or perhaps which authors you like and could recommend? Um, authors I, I like and could recommend, well, I, I don't know what you like, so I'm a bit cautious about that. But if you haven't read Tolkien, if you haven't read The Lord of the Rings, maybe you've just seen the films, read it, you know, try it, because it is amazing. I reread it after 20 years, just recently. I hadn't read it since I became a writer and, uh, and since the films came out, and I loved it. I was very relieved to still find its power it still works so so try that in terms of writing i haven't got there's not time to give you too many hints but um i think one sensible one is just carry a small notebook with you so that you can just if you get ideas for stories or you know you see something write it down otherwise you'll forget it um the second thing boring but it's true is rewrite um you know put your whatever you've written away for a bit until you've sort of forgotten it maybe a couple of weeks and then come back to it and it's amazing how you will see what's wrong with it i'm doing that with wolfbane at the moment um i've got to the end of the first what i call the first draft you know each time each free chapter i've written it many many times but eventually i've got happy with it and i've printed it and finally i've got to the end of the book and uh, I took a, about a week off and I've just got back to rereading what I call the first draft. And the first few chapters are terrible. Well, I think they're terrible, but that's what happens. And then you, you, you know, you've got a better sense of what the story is and you can fix it and just take as much time as you like to fix it. And the final thing I would say is um, switch your phone off and disable the internet while you're writing, because the internet and social media are the enemies of concentration. And whatever you are, and whatever kind of writer you want to be, you need to be able to concentrate. So there we are, that's something slightly fierce, but um, try it and see. And here's um, Marken, I think I'm pronouncing it right. I will, yeah, this is a really interesting one. I wonder if you will write a death for any of the main trio, Torek, Wolf and Wren. Death, after all, it's an inescapable fact. Uh, and he goes on to say, wolves do not live long compared to some humans. Uh, well, you know, and it's it's a really interesting, I'm just curious as to how you think of avoiding or writing it. Well, on Wolf, um, he's only about sort of six now, um, I think, because, you know, he was only three moons old in Wolf Brother. Uh, and the first six books, you know, I mean, he's only about six or seven now, so he's got a way to go. We don't need to worry about him just yet. Um, of course, I'm not going to tell you whether I'm going to um, kill any of them in the last book. Wolf Bane. Bane means doom. Um, so, you know, that could just indicate something. 
there are some death rites in Wolfbane. That's all I will say. That's all I will say about that. And finally, we have something from Mexico, which I'm not actually going to show. This is from Maria Jose Blanco Salazar. Um, and she sent a lovely message, but she did ask not to show it. So I won't, it just describing how much the books meant to, to you, Maria. Um, it's fair to say that you went through a pretty tough time when you were younger and um, I'm really glad the books helped. Um, the reason I'm not showing your, your second email, which, which just has some questions, is that they do have some spoilers and I, you know, some people won't have read the, 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 all the books. Um, but this one question is, is an interesting one. If spirit walking leaves marks and Torak spirit walked in a soul eater, I'm not going to mention which soul eater, is there part of that soul eater living in him? Um, and that's that's really interesting. And and it's something spirit walking leaves little traces in Torak. We know that that's why he's got green flecks in his eyes because he spirit walked in the trees. And I've always wanted to do something with the fact that there is there are soul eater traces in him because of that spirit walking in Ghost Hunter. Um, we'll have to see. I'm not quite sure if it's going to come into Wolfbane or, or how. But that is in my head so well spotted you are an expert um and then there's a question about um yes what is far's name um why why i've never got to read it well because i didn't name him to begin with and then i felt it would seem a bit strange later in the books suddenly to mention his name um uh, how was the ice demon created well a fire opal did come into it and it does work out that the person who the mother of the, the ice demon did have in her possession for a while part of the fire opal um, to answer your question in code as it were don't want to give too much away and the last one is, is a more general one is Torek is Torek is born gifted as a spirit walker um, uh, is Ren's magecraft skill a gift as well um, or was it inherited um, and so was she was she born a mage because she was destined to find Torek and help him? Well, there's a bit of mystery about that. What I can say is mage being a mage is not an inherited skill. It's something you just have, but it doesn't come from your parents. Um, and it's a mystery as who as to who will become a mage and who doesn't. Um, but there I, there isn't really in Torek's world that sense of fate, you know, of being destined to work with Torak or anything like that. So I think we'll leave that a little bit mysterious, but thank you very much, Maria Jose, for getting in touch from Mexico. Um, so that's the first part. And now it's time for um, the giveaway, which of course is three copies of um, Skin Taker. And uh, it's really easy. And um, I think we've got a little video um, which explains how to do it, and also the winners of the previous one, which was a couple of couple of months ago now. Take it away. It's another Michelle Live, which means we've got another amazing giveaway for oh you. God. Last time we had ten copies of the wonderful Viper's Daughter audiobook to give away, read of course by Sir Ian McCallum, who has narrated every book in the Wolf Brothers series. Ten lucky winners. Perhaps you're one of them. Well, wait no more. Here are the winners' names. Marie, Laura, Victoria, Chris, Emily, Sophie, Rosa, Taryn, Igor, and Jonathan. If you won, well done. If you didn't, well, try entering this time. To celebrate the publication of Skin Taker in April, we're giving away three copies of the lavishly produced hardback book. It's really gorgeous. To win, simply send an email to this address, win at skintaker.today. And remember, we've got a special link for you to share with your friends. Tell them to read.skintaker.today and they'll go straight to the Amazon page. Pass it on. Well, good luck everyone who uh, wants to enter that. Now we'll crack on with part two of the questions. 
Um, this is Matthew talking about Gods and Warriors, um, my Bronze Age series. And uh, he said he, he'd sort of delayed reading the last one and then finally decided to finish things off at the beginning of this year. Uh, brought me back to my younger days, um, a tired and cynical university student. <laughs> love that you wait until you're a tired and cynical 60 year old <laughs> um and uh, you loved it as much as the others i'm so glad um will we ever return to the world of gods and warriors yeah um i have no plans to at the moment uh matthew but but who knows but we'll see um now mary i hope i'm pronouncing your name right um currently writing an artistic statement which has made me reflect on why i make the work i do and what values I have, and talking about the impact of Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I remember crying at what Tarek would have thought about what we've done to the world. Yes, I, I sort of that sometimes too as well. And she's made a sort of artwork on narrative landscapes, which actually looks beautiful. Um, we've just got, yes, um, on the loss of knowledge of our ancestors and their rituals and beliefs. Um, and you say some lovely things. And it's also what I'm particularly pleased about this. It says your books have made me fall in love with where I'm from. That's Northern Ireland. Um, we have beautiful landscapes, thousands of ancient sites and rich legend and folklore. Yes, I've been reading uh, uh, some books on your folklore just recently by accident, actually. Coincidence, rather. Um, I've never loved any other books like I love them. I'm so glad, uh, Mari, that's or Mary. That's just wonderful. Um, Becky. I read the whole Wolf Brothers series. I read the whole Wolf Brothers series about once every two years, and it makes me so unbelievably happy each time. Uh, well, I'm so glad, and I hope you enjoy Worth Viper's Daughter and Skin Taker. Um, and Caitlin, uh, I love your Wolf Brother books so much. And I really feel connected to Torak, so that's lovely to know. Um, a lot of you feel that, actually, and Torak or Ren or Wolf. I'm, I'm really glad about that. Um, I've had a long one from Mike, so thank you very much, Mike. I won't show it, but just to say that he, all sorts of druid goings on, and he's got a wolf. He had another wolf in the garden, so I don't know if we can show some of the footage. Yes, there we go. Look at this. I mean, can you imagine? That's just fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's not a wolf, <laughs> don't think, but anyway. Um, and a porcupine. Yes, you saw a live badger. Sorry, badger. Yes um gosh amazing yeah well thank you thank you for sending those in um sorry i was trying to sort of follow along and watch the video as well um jasmine or yasmin i'm not quite sure how we pronounce your name um one afternoon yes my mum came home with a hard copy of outcast and then she she loved chronicles um they gave sand lonely preteen me so much happiness and wonder yes it can be a difficult time being a preteen um Struggled with motivation to read sometimes, but I really want to dive back into the world. And here's hoping I stop procrastinating soon. Well, do, and then you can read Viper's Daughter and Skin Taker soon. Here's one from Brian, um, who read Wolf Brother in seventh grade, so maybe you're in the States. Not sure, really liked how it was outdoors and adventure-y. Um, your favourite is Oathbreaker. I'm, I'm glad, because that was a difficult one to write, so I'm glad you liked that. Excited to get your paws on Viper's Daughter, and you enjoyed... Um, gods and warriors during quarantine that's good um it was the f uh, what i like about this is you say wolf brother um was the first book i actually liked um up till then you hated reading so i'm i'm glad that i managed to convert you to reading um here is someone from a kurt and um have you some hidden easter eggs and homage or homage in chronicles of ancient darkness no i haven't i've only got a vague idea of what easter eggs are but uh, in this context but i don't i don't tend to do that i don't like putting references to other books or anything like that in in my stories because if i find that sort of thing in in a story it pulls me out of the story uh makes me realize it's just a story and i don't like that so so no um i don't for that reason, I wouldn't give my characters a name from one of my fans. Um, I know some authors do, and, and you know, no criticism of them, but I prefer not to. Um, good question, though. Uh, Marie Gibbons, uh, I had to reach out and say how much your books have kept my 12-year-old daughter, Amelia, going through what feels like a never-ending lockdown in the UK. Yeah, I know what I know what you mean. It does feel like it's just gone on forever. Um, 
So I'm glad it's helped tremendously. And we've since read the whole collection, just finished Viper's Daughter. Is there a way to, to buy signed books uh, when it is released? Uh, this is Skin Taker. Well, um, I think check with your local bookshop because I normally I there would be, I go to a, a, a warehouse and sign about 3000, but I can't this year. Um, so I've only just signed a few hundred book plates. You might, your local bookshop might be able to, to have one because I'm signing book plates and then they stick them in the books. It's a bit laborious. Um, you say, I've never known her to be so enthralled. It is brilliant. And I love the way you've started a virtual reading club and getting them to read Wolf Brother. So I'm, I'm sorry, but signed books this year may be a casualty of COVID. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I hope she enjoys it anyway. That's the main thing. And Coast, Kirsten uh, is currently, 12-year-old son is reading Outcast. I'd love to get him a signed copy uh, with a personal note of Gods and Warriors uh, but live in Canada. Um, I'm afraid <laughs> for the same, well, that really isn't going to be possible, I'm afraid, um, because I do get requests from people to, to sign books, just individual books, and I just wouldn't be able to do it, particularly now, you know, and it just it would open the floodgates. But anyway, I hope he enjoys Gods and Warriors. Sorry about that. Uh, Julia uh, is a school librarian. Yay. Um, very, very amazing task. And this is in uh, uh, South Africa, where, yes, you've just heard you're, you're going to be online for the next four weeks. Well, you've already been online because um, you sent your message in January. Um, so looking at the video clips, um, you s ah, yes, and you saw the Ian McKellen uh, reading. It was offered by something called Astro Books Free. Um, I'm afraid, thank you very much for, for checking about that. And I'm afraid that that is a pirate copy. So please don't, um, um, please don't support pirate, pirate sites. I'm sure you wouldn't, and which is why you bothered to check. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I'm sorry, um, Adam, but thank you for enjoying the books. Uh, Adam uh, runs a ghost podcast and um, I will be taking part in that, I think, um, at some point um, in the summer. Um, so generally, if, if somebody runs a podcast, um, you, you know, do get in touch, because if I can fit it into to writing, I will. Um, th there is a difference between, you know, going on a podcast where lots of other people can take part and, and listen uh, to, as compared to helping someone with their private project or, or school schoolwork or something like that. So, um but yes, and then Benji, yes. Are you going to do a prequel series on Torax life? Uh, no, I don't. I think I can be fairly safe about that because Torax was 12 when Wolf Brother started. So there's not going to be, and his life hadn't been that eventful uh, up until then because he'd just been happily living with his father. So nice idea, but no. Heidi, um, instantly captivated by Wolf Brother. Um, one of my main inspirations for starting writing books of my own. That's brilliant, Heidi. I'm glad about that. Something I've always wanted, wondered, and this is a great question. What does Ren and many other female characters do when they have their moon bleed? In other words, their period. Um, I've often wondered what women did back then. This is a great question. And I did have to consider this because in some cultures, some traditional cultures, there would be quite a big sort of uh, rite in, in some cultures often the, the later ones, not the sort of hunter-gatherers, um, they would isolate the, the girl in a little hut on her own for about three months. And she's poor girl had to sit there to be purified because of this idea that, you know, you were impure if you had your first period. Um, and then for boys, there would also be rites, sometimes quite terrifying and, and painful as well. But what I found is that tended to be, some lovely raven pictures in the background, actually, um, what I found is that tended to be in what the sort of early farming cultures, um, not so much the hunter gatherers. Hunter gatherers don't tend to go in for great big rites of passage, as they're called. Um, some do, but some many don't. And I made the decision with my books that they wouldn't, because it 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 just doesn't form part of the stories, and and um, it's not sort of who those clans are. It doesn't fit. So if you have your first moon bleed, you get your tattoo just to show, um, and that's it. But great question. Um, Leah, 
would you ever consider writing a companion novel, this is an interesting one, for Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, about the different stories of the clans? Um, a, say a book, this is a bit different though, because not a novel, a book of the clan's folk tales could expand the mythology, uh, almost like Native American stories. You, you're right to pick up on that. Uh, for example, you know, a story about first raven burned black by flying into the sun and that sort of thing, or actually steaming the sun. Um, it's a really interesting idea um, and there's actually a, a lovely, I think it's a lovely story that Finkelian tells in Skin Taker. But when you really come down to it, um, I think it might not be as involving as, as the books themselves are, because, you know, what's involving about those books are the characters. It's Torak and Wren and Wolf. And there's a, you, you're, it's a more distant when you're reading a little book of a story about how first Raven stole the sun or something like that. Uh, so I'm not sure you could sustain interest in the whole book. So it's an interesting idea. Thank you for that. Uh, Callum, would you ever consider making, this is an interesting one, posters of the Wolf Brother world? Um, because he says, you know, while I've been listening to the audio book on YouTube, I have wanted to have a look and, you know, you can just imagine having a poster. I had one of the Lord of the Rings uh, and I used to follow it. Um, it's a great idea. Um, the publishers, I don't see it happening at the moment. The publishers who published the first six books haven't really done much with those books, and I can't see them producing a poster anytime soon. Um, I don't know. Um, at some point, maybe if the TV series comes off, then of course, who knows? But it's a lovely idea. Robin, um, yes, now I think this is the final question. So sorry, we're running over time a little bit, but Robin, uh, as you initially wrote adult fiction, what was it that changed your focus to want to write for younger readers? Was it conscious uh, or not? Um, it was It was. It, it was never a conscious decision. Always, always what comes first is the story. And um, what happened was I was actually supposed to be writing a, another adult book, but I just had a look at a story I'd written a long time before about a boy and a wolf and it wasn't set in the stone age but you know i just sort of got keen on it and then very quickly i had this feeling that I, this sort of image of torak and wolf and i knew that torak was a stone age boy and i knew that he was 12. i don't know why i knew that but i did and so the character came first the characters and then i thought well it's probably going to be a children's book then or, or for younger readers because the protagonist is is 12. And that's how it came about. So um, it's always the story that, that comes first. So who knows what will follow <laughs> when I finish Wolfbane. Um, I'll, you know, whether it'll be an adult book or, or something else, I don't know. But that's a great question on which to finish the questions and comments. And we're almost um, out of time, but I think we've got just a bit of time. Thank you for all of them who, who've sent them in. Um, and uh, thank you for that, Save the Animals. And we've got a bit of time if anyone's got any questions, as a, apart from just lovely messages, which is always nice to hear. Um, thank you. My mum has to drag me away from it to take me back to the real world. Ah, yes, I know the feeling. My mother used to sit on my book um, sometimes when she wanted to force me outside. Otherwise, I would read all weekend. She would just sit on my book, whatever book I was reading. I wouldn't have survived quarantine without Michelle's books. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad it helped you get through quarantine. Yes, I think we've all been reading a bit more. I've certainly been reading more, hence reading The Lord of the Rings. Um, it's, it's definitely helped. Um, Travelling around, yes, researching my books. Yes, a dream I'm still chasing. Gosh, I'm just chasing the dream of actually doing some travelling of myself. It would be lovely. Uh, my, my ravens made a nest in my chimney. You had ravens nesting in your chimney. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. They've got very deep squawks as well. Um, that's that's quite a sound. Yeah, we have lots of crows on the common, but not ravens, I have to say. I love the series. I made a book club at school. That is that is fantastic. Congratulations. And I hope you're enjoying that. Love ravens, yes. Yes, I do too. I mean, there was some those the footage that the elf was showing. Um uh, that, that the footage that the elf was showing was actually stuff I'd taken when I was on my research trip in Alaska. And that was a fantastic time. Uh, there was this Native American family who'd been feeding the ravens popcorn out of a paper bag and then when they left they gave me the rest of the popcorn, the rest of the bag, and I fed the ravens. It was fun, very fun. Well that is all we've got time for. Um, 
Thank you so much, everybody who sent in a question or a comment. Um, you'll have gathered, I should say, that um, it can be a few weeks until the next streaming one. So don't send in an, an urgent question because you won't get an urgent answer. But I will eventually answer in the next um, Michelle Paver Live. Um, so just keep the questions coming. Go to michellepaver.com forward slash ask uh, and fill in the form. And uh, you can also keep up to date with me. Uh, I've got to read this bit on Twitter uh, at Michelle Paver or on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, so it remains for me just to say thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, goodbye until next time and stay safe and stay well and happy reading. It's another Michelle Live, which means we've got another amazing giveaway for you. Last time we had 10 copies of the wonderful Viper's Daughter audiobook to give away, read of course by Sir Ian McCallum, who has narrated every book in the Wolf Brothers series. 10 lucky winners, perhaps you're one of them. Well, wait no more. Here are the winners' names. Marie, Laura, Victoria, Chris, Emily, Sophie, Rosa, Taryn, Igor, and Jonathan. If you won, well done. If you didn't, well, try entering this time. To celebrate the publication of Skin Taker in April, we're giving away three copies of the lavishly produced hardback book. It's really gorgeous. To win, simply send an email to this address. Win at skintaker.today And remember, we've got a special link for you to share with your friends. Tell them to read.skintaker.today And they'll go straight to the Amazon page. Pass it on.